Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and welcome to a special edition of Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And I'm here today to talk to you about Ghost Rider, episode Who's Who. I think this is season one. So, this is a Tina solo episode where she gets to shine. And it's one of my all time favorite episodes. This episode was pretty dark compared to other episodes, but it was dark on that of a kid's level. Before I go any further, let me just say, rest in peace to all these actors and this actress because they have all now sadly passed away. Some by natural causes, others due to illnesses and it's really sad to lose anyone and you know it's still odd that these people are dead especially this one dude because it's like i grew up watching him on tv and he's gone now you know John Elliott, who played Mr. Fernandez, like Gabri and Alice's dad. There's Mike Hodge, who was Detective Kincaid. Of course, there's the actress who played Lorna Barnes in this episode, Valerie. Oh, wait, how do you say her name? No, 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 um, Patricia Berry. Patricia Berry, and then, um, you have like, you know, the guys that she worked with or her husband, John Martin, and you have Sam Stoneburner. And you know, like Mr. Fernandez, man, I just remember this dude. Like he was like one of the first like Latino people I've ever seen on TV. He had that strong voice to him. Um, his wife was like his wife in real life. She was in Star Trek Insurrection. She was the alien that Captain Picard fell in love with. And she was in Spider-Man 2 as Dr. Ock's wife. And so, yeah, it's sad to see them go, you know. So, Tina. She is played by Tram Ah Tran. And she was really cool in this role. She was very smart. She was good at journalism. She was a good junior detective. She had an upbeat personality. She, her character was best friends with that of Gabby. And in this episode, like, it starts the turning point of the relationship between Alex and Tina. This is really unique because it's not every day you see an interracial couple in the 90s and especially that of one who's Vietnamese and one who's Mexican and you know if you go someplace like the Philippines yeah that's like you know it's typical to see like you know an Asian person and a Spanish person but how often do you see it on television and in real life like in real life you know most Asian women are either with Asian men or white dudes and stuff so it's very rare to see them with a Spanish person and so this was like a kid's show back in like in the 90s so that was very rare to see and this is why like you know pbs is so great because you know pbs is all about like inclusion and like acceptance and like diversity and stuff like that but the character of tina this is like a really like i said before this is a dark episode dark on the kids level though but it was pretty dark it deals with the deranged like obsessed person who literally wants to do harm to like another person and you know in this in this show we've seen kids be kidnapped before and stuff like that but this was when it really got like dark and it's probably why the last season is so light and humorous as it is and why they started bringing in more younger characters the original cast was starting to get older they were starting to age out of their role you had episodes like this where people are getting hit in the head and tied up <laughs> and threatening letters and stuff. And so that's why the last season is the way it is. And I can't stand the last season. So you can tell parents probably like complained and everything. But first, let me get through like, you know, well, actually, yeah, let me get through this part. So anyway, Tina, her and her mom are like, you know, supposed to fix the dress. 
of that of the famous Lana Barnes. Now, Lana Barnes is a fictional character. In this universe, she's considered the first American female action star. She's made hundreds of movies. She is extremely famous and she's about to be accepted a award of achievement. And Lana Barnes is played by Patricia Berry, who I said sadly passed away, I believe in 2016, I believe it was. And her character is like larger than life. She's fabulous. She's famous. She speaks in a very fabulous kind of way. She always calls people pookie and everything. She reminds me of Lucille Ball from I Love Lucy with the copper red hair, the larger than life personality. That's who she reminds me of and a little bit of Joan Rivers and stuff. But unlike Joan Rivers, <laughs> Lana Barnes is extremely sweet and kind and everything. Even when she's mad at something, like she's still nice to people or like even when her life is in danger, she doesn't let it stress her out. And she's lived that Hollywood lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? She's been married for a time. She has an estranged daughter who she hasn't seen and spoken to for years. And she still lives her life as though she's famous in, in the movies, even though her character hasn't had a hit in many years. But she still lives her life as though she is those characters. In her house, it's literally a shrine of all the memorabilia that she had when she was in those movies and stuff. And so she can't escape her past. And that's how she just wants to live. She wants to be happy around, surrounded by the stuff that gives her joy. And so like, and it's interesting because the actress who played her, who passed away, she's been in like hundreds of roles, mostly guest roles and movies and TV shows. Like she's been in a lot of stuff. But this is the only thing I've ever seen her in. And so like, because of this, Tina is a huge, huge, huge diehard fan of hers, which of course makes her happy because she loves her fans. Her fans is what keeps her relevant and alive. And so she tells Tina that like, since you're a huge fan and you know everything about me because of my movies, I want to like hire you as like my secretary. Basically, Tina's job is to answers Lana's fan mail, which bugs the crap out of me because this made me realize something. A lot of celebrities don't answer their fan mails. So when I would write them back in like the 90s and I'll get like autographed pictures and stuff, it was never them. <laughs> it was always their assistant and stuff. And that bugs the crap out of me. And that's how it is online too. A lot of these celebrities who have social media, it's not really them behind the like device. It's like a PR person and stuff. The only time you can tell when it's a genuine real person is when this star hasn't acted or sung in a very, very, very long time. And they're constantly online talking about stuff, not retweeting stuff, but talking about stuff. And it's things they're passionate about. That's how you can always tell it's the real person behind it. And so Tina is tasked, like I said before, with answering her fan mail. And so like, she has to literally sound like Lana Barnes, which Tina cannot do and she has difficulty. So Lana tells her, you know, I talk the way I live, bigger, larger than life. And of course, you got to add the pookies in there. <laughs> so Tina finally is able to figure it out and answer the fan mail. However, there is a problem. Some of the fan mail is very, very sinister. A person talking about how, like, you know, you ruined my life. You took everything from me. I'm... Um, I'm the real Lana Barnes and this and that. It creeps Tina out and for good reason. She's just a teenager. So this really upsets her to the point where she runs out the house and crying and stuff like that. And the top, the make matters worse. Somebody keeps calling the phone, but they don't like, you know, say nothing. And it really creeps out. Now, 
it is revealed <laughs> because by the third episode i realized something alex is missing from this um episode and he shows up at the very very end and shows up in the fourth episode again he is the one calling lana barnes place and not saying nothing and hanging up and the reason for that is that once he found out tina is working for her he um started calling because he wanted to tell tina something but he was very shy and nervous it turns out that Alex has a huge crush on Tina and he's having a hard time finding the words to like tell her and stuff because he's very young and he's new at this whole romance thing. And this is when his father comes in and gives him some words of advice about women. Like he tells him, I think something about like his father used to act the same way with every woman except for his mother. And so... He tells Alex that every woman is different and you can't treat them the same and stuff like that. It's not much like, you know, um, guidance, but it's enough for people to understand and that fatherly bond, um, bond with his son. And he tells his son, you know, anytime you have a problem, you can always talk to me, which is something a lot of guardians have a trouble doing. They don't want to talk to the youngsters about life. I know I don't with... <laughs> <laughs> my nieces and nephew it's just weird like you don't want to pry you know what i'm saying but then when they do ask stuff you give them advice because that's what a older guardian is supposed to do you know so let's get to jamal jamal is going through a bit of a crisis see his grandmother is ill so ill that she had to be hospitalized and they had to keep her overnight so he's really upset about this because he loves his grandmother um because his father's out of town working and stuff and his mother's always working you know him and his mother live with the grandma and stuff and he lives in his dad's old room he is the one who discovered ghost rider the ghost that like you know writes to them and helps them out solve mysteries and remember ghost rider the creator it was never revealed in the show but the creator said many years later that ghost rider is actually an escaped slave who taught young kids how to read and stuff and he was hunted down by like you know slave hunters and murdered by them and dogs and stuff and it, I think he said that Ghost Rider is actually related to Jamal. And that's why he was in um, one of Jamal's books that was passed down by generation to generation and stuff. And so that was always a fascinating thing, which is something that two newer Ghost Rider shows never um, mentioned and stuff. Because the newer one that's on Apple Plus is completely different where Ghost Rider makes people from books and creatures and stuff come alive and so this is something really difficult for jamal to go through because he loves his grandmother to death when she starts to feel better he becomes very overprotective he doesn't like hearing that she has a boyfriend um he's propping her pillow he's making sure everything is like fine he's showing her his karate which scares the bejesus out of her because it's like he doesn't even like it when she's talking about writing her will and everything and because he doesn't know what that is and it's really upsetting to him but it's upsetting to her that he's becoming overprotective and stuff but you know that's how family is after she gets the gang in on what's going on they decide to go in detective mode and try to figure out who wants to kill lana barnes and everything and so you know they are great detectives and they teach kids like how to be young detectives and stuff. And I'm pretty sure there's been some people that took up um, criminal justice as like a major because of this show, you know? And so like, first they have to get the clues. They have to figure out who will want to harm Lana. Does she have any enemies and stuff? Well, while all this is going on, some bad stuff is going on. Every time Lana tries to leave the house to go somewhere, because she's supposed to go down to the police station to, like, you know, um, tell them what's going on. Because the kids have to make her go to the police station. She does not want to go on her own. In fact, she doesn't even believe she has a deranged fan. She just thinks it's a fan who's a little grumpy or whatever and doesn't think much of it, you know. 
And so, but when she tries to go in her garage to get her bike, somebody puts like a stick there to keep her trapped in. And so as everybody's looking for her, Tina is the one who finds her um, when she heads back to her house. It's funny because Tina's all in incognito, <laughs> like a 1930s, like, you know, spy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh boy, I swear. <laughs> And so, but Lana is starting to realize, oh, somebody is coming to get her because somebody sent flowers to her, one live and one dead. And the notes are getting more and more deranged. Now, the pattern of the notes are really interesting. In the beginning, the person is talking to Lana like they're actually talking to her, but instead they're using titles from her movies. And I love that wordplay is so ingenious, but this person lets people know how pissed they are by underlining certain words and capitalizing them. I assumed there would be like a pattern with that, but there wasn't. But then the late <clears throat> the letters start to get more sinister as they go on and they no longer speak of her movies. And so the kids, they realize Lana has made some enemies over the time. She's been married for a time. She has an estranged daughter. And so they start to pick the piece of like, you know, the four husbands. One is dead. One's in jail. Uh, one's still alive and running about. And the other one is pissed because Lana literally ruined his life when she exposed his real name as opposed to his stage name. And so they start to investigate, like, you know, the husbands and stuff. Well, two of them are supposed to show up, I think. No, one of them is supposed to show up at, like, her award ceremony. So they start pumping him for, like, information. And they realize, you know, he's still in love with her. Then there is the other husband who has um, Janine, who is the daughter of, like, you know, Lana. The daughter is estranged. The daughter feels like her mother has no time for her and stuff because they haven't seen each other for years because all she cares about is her career. So she's disgruntled, but she's not the person behind all this. Then there is an actor who worked with Lana. And, and so like it turns out he's in the clear because like, you know, um, she helped him get like a new job and make him millions and stuff. And so as they're like searching through the letters, they realize something like there's an imprint on one. So they show you a nice trick to like make the letters come up by shading it in. And so it leads them to the flower shop. Because, you know, on the back of the, like the bouquet has like the logo of it and stuff. And what's interesting is there's a hippie who works at the, the, the flower shop, April Flowers. And she is played by Valerie Perrini or something like that. I can't quite say her last name. And she was in one of the Superman movies. She played Lex's girlfriend. And so she, and I couldn't, I'm all like, something has to be up with this actress. They got her dressed as a hippie, a hat, glasses. You can't see her face, so you don't know who it is. But they always bring in famous people on this show. Like, always and stuff. And so, like, she's like, you know, she's sensing a ghostly vibe around the kids. Because Ghostwriter is helping them solve the case and everything. And so Ghostwriter's task is, you know, they ask him questions, they help, um, so he'll search through, like, books or go around town and look for, like, addresses and stuff and, you know, things like that. And I like how in this show they treat Ghostwriter with respect, saying please and thank you, as opposed to the new Ghostwriter mystery show where they just boss him around and everything and call him GW. I hate that crap. <laughs> <laughs> and so like um but sadly Valerie is going through some health problems she has um Parkinson's and because of that it has confined her to a wheelchair and it's to the point where she's gained a lot of weight and the medicine for her Parkinson is making her teeth fall out so she had to get her teeth like you know replaced and stuff she doesn't look anything like she used to back in the day. And it's so sad to see her go through all these health problems. 
now the imprint of the letter that um because see when they went to the flower shop they got the receipts and there was an imprint on there from the instructions and stuff right and it led them to a place that sells wigs and it's very interesting how they found that out because they just had the name of the place and the word bob and they didn't know what bob meant they assumed it was a person so then they got out uh, like a dictionary i remember those <laughs> This was back in the, this show was back in the early 90s. So computers are huge. You had the sources, you had dictionaries. In fact, this show is what caused me to get a thesaurus and everything. And boy, did that help me out when I was in school. And, but now everything's on the internet. And so like they realized Bob isn't a person, nor is it a place. It's actually, or it, it's also not like, you know, the end of like, you know, a fishing rod and stuff like that. But it has to do with a short hairstyle and Lana has a short hairstyle and copper bob means they wanted a copper wig because, you know, her hair is red. And so somebody's going to impersonate her. But the question is who? Well, as they was looking through a books of who's who when it comes to Lana Barnes and all the people that work with her, they realized something. She had a stunt person. Rob decided that all stunt people are men because a woman can't handle the job. But they realized something that Lana had a female stunt double. And so because of that, she was the first like female stunt double in that fictional world. And so like after putting like the pieces together and stuff like that and realizing that you know it had to have been the stunt person that has a grudge against lana because that person says that you know they're the real lana barnes you stole everything from them um lana gets credited with all her action stuff when it's not actually her doing it it's the stunt double and the stunt person would have to look similar to her and have to like buy a red wig to match her hair so as they're at the ceremony and everything you know um lana they think they see lana but it's not her and even her daughter thinks of her and the daughter got mistaken for the stunt double because it's like you know um she's all like my mother won't even like say hey to me and stuff but it, it Lana's not even there because she somehow ended up calling the hotel that is supposed to be um, vineyard at and Tina hears her mouth muffled on the phone because somebody tied her up at her place and so Rob goes in the dressing room to see who's pretending to be Lana he gets knocked in the head with a vase boy <laughs> This is a kid's show and a grown person knocked a teenager out with a vase <laughs> <laughs> but Rob's always getting beat up on this show. <laughs> so they tie him up. They got, oh, she got, she gags him. And then at the acceptance speech, they read it and they realize it doesn't even sound like Lana. So they capture like the stunt person. And, you know, as the police are there and Lana's there, Lana does something interesting. She gives praise to her stunt double lady. You know, saying that she would not be the person she is today if it wasn't for her doing all her stunts. And that's something a lot of people never stop and think about. Like, I remember when I used to watch Xena, I used to assume it was Lucy Lawless doing it until I noticed something. Whenever you see her do her stunts, you never see her face. And it's because it was the stunt person. And, I'm, and then that started kind of taking me out of the show. I'm like, oh, that's not Lucy. That's just her stunt though. I'm like, wow, Lucy can't throw a punch. Lucy can't throw a kick. Like, what's wrong with that? You know what I'm saying? And then the same thing with Power Rangers. I assume it was them doing their stuff, but it's really the stunt people or the Japanese footage. And that's something that the Power Ranger stars always give credit to when people always ask, you know, when you did this and you did that, they always say, oh, no, no, no. When we're morphed and in the suits, that's our stunt people and stuff. And I remember, I don't even remember what network. It might have been UPN. They had an award show. It was the first award show that was dedicated to stunt workers and stuff. And they received awards and stuff. And I didn't know who none of those stunt people were. And it was like really cool that they did that. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger is the one who had it. But I've never seen that award show since then. It probably didn't get that much traction or ratings on um, on TV. 
And so even though she gives praise to the stunt lady, she still has to be arrested for all the threatening notes. And so, you know, like I said before, like this was like a really cool episode. And it ends with like Alex finally telling like, you know, Tina how he feels. And there's even like some cool like um like pretend imaginary stuff like when the kids are trying to figure it out and they're trying to like, you know, map it out in their head what went on in Lana's life, they're pretending to like play her and the people who like worked with her and this like, you know, black and white spy noir, uh, noir um, type setting and everything. And it's so funny seeing Tina pretending to be Lana Barnes and all the other boys with the fake New Yorker accents and stuff. And it's like really cool. So yeah, this is like a really cool episode. It was like, cool that tina had like you know um her solo episode which is actually the actress's favorite episode and stuff and the actress still looks the same exact way she did all those years ago just like older and stuff now lana she loves tina to death like it's one of her like most favorite like fans she's ever met and it's to the point to where it helps her regain the connection between her real daughter towards the end of the episode because you know it's kind of like she keeps showering tina with all this like praise and love but then she doesn't do it with her own daughter it would have been nice to see her rekindle a bit more with her daughter but them just hanging out and finna spend the day together i guess is enough is enough for like a kids program you know Happy Asian and Pacific Islander month, everybody. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.